All right, take your textbooks out, turn to page 109. And I gave you two extra credit chances last night. Uh, you had number 26, you also had number 31. How many attempted to graph one or both of those? The only my back row people, all right. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at them and see how we did. The rest of you are going to get some graph paper out. And let's go ahead and graph them now. Review what we were talking about yesterday, uh, graphing with slope-intercept form. Graphing with slope-intercept form. And of course, uh, we had practiced graphing in slope-intercept form when the form was already there for us, right? And we said, super easy. You don't have to do any math at all. You plot the, what first class? Y-intercept. Then you'll track the? slope to get your second point and simply connect the dots, right? Draw that line between the points. Oh, what is slope-intercept form, Noah? Um, so uh -oh. Y or something. Uh-oh. Brecken, what's slope-intercept form? Y equals mx plus Noah, what is slope-intercept form? Right, where the key, Noah, is you have the y by itself. by itself, then the after the equal sign, the x term, and then the constant term. Now, we already should know, Noah, that the m represents slope. the slope. There's your rise over run. And, of course, the b represents our y-intercept. Good. Why am I writing this second time? I don't know. It's already on the poster over there. But anyway, uh, the slope and the y-intercept, right? So whatever number we see by itself, we're going to plot that on class, the y-axis. Good, man. It's the y-intercept, so we put on the y-axis. The problem is most of our equations, like you see on the poster, aren't going to start out in this form. You have to get them there, and that's what we had to do on number 26. We had a 2y negative 4x is equal to 3. In order to graph this equation using slope-intercept form, we first must get it in the slope-intercept form. Gavin, um, what do we have to do? Two steps to get the slope-intercept form here. Um, move the negative 4 over. Well, I don't see a negative 4. Negative 4. Negative 4x, yeah. We have to move the negative 4x over. And remember, we've got to put it before the constant term, right? Because we need the x term right after the equal sign. And um, when I move it over, it becomes positive 4x. Positive 4x, giving us 2y is equal to positive 4x, positive 3. But obviously, it's not slope-intercept form yet because y is not yet class by itself. So the next thing we would have had to do, Maddie, was... Divide everything by the 2. And again, technically you divide both sides by 2, but in doing that, you'll remember if you divided a polynomial by a monomial, you divide each term separately by the monomial anyway, so it doesn't hurt to write it as each term. It's an easier way to think of it. What does it simplify to when we divide by the 2, Maddie? Good, and I actually don't mind the mixed number here. Normally I tell you I abhor mixed numbers in algebra, but because this is our y-intercept, it's easier to think in terms of one and a half than three halves. One thing I might do on the slope, normally I hate fractions, slope is a fraction, I might leave it as two over one, though, again, by now we should have a pretty good mental picture. It's rise, two, run, one, even if we can't see the one. So, Gavin, we should have started by plotting our as our y-intercept, which means it's on the y-axis. I emphasize that because I've had students put this on the x-axis. It is the y-intercept. It must go on the y-axis at 1 and at half on the y-axis, okay? And then once we've plotted that point, we should, Maddie, Right, and up two would mean, okay, here's one, here's two at the three and a half mark now, and then over one puts us right here. And of course, we take our straight edge, which hopefully we have with us in class, and uh, we would uh, connect the dots to get a line like that. Did we have this? 
for our extra credit. Very good, there's the one and a half. Rise two, run one. And likewise, excellent. All right, so each of you with the point. Uh, those who did not do it, um, again, not a problem, you didn't have to, but does it make sense what we should have done? Right? We feel like we could have done it if we just taken the time, perhaps. All right, let's take a look at the second equation. Uh, that was extra credit. That was number 31. 5x minus 2y equals 10. Now, to be fair, this would be really easy to do intercept method. Okay, it would. Um, but we're going to do slope-intercept form instead. And so, because uh, that's what we're practicing with. So to do the slope-intercept form, Noah, what should they have done first last night? Okay, and there's two ways you could do this. Pick one of them. Okay, I like the double swap, right? It takes care of the fact that you've got a negative y, right? So when I double swap, it gives me... And if you can say equals 2y class, you could say equals 2y like this as well, by the way. If it really bothers you that the y is on the wrong side, it's an equal sign. It doesn't matter where you put the equals 2y. It could be equals 2y this way or equals 2y that way. And maybe seeing it like this would make it a little bit easier for us. At this point, Brecken, all we'd have to do is divide away the 2 from everything to get. Well, I don't want that for the slope. Remember, slope needs to be just a single fraction. Or 5, that's x. You can want the 5x over 2 normally preferred. Right, and here's where I want either a whole number or a mixed number ideally. Now, again, it would have been wrong for to leave 3 halves, but when it would come time to actually plot it, we'd have to think 1 and a half. Not a problem to do it here. It wouldn't be a problem to have left 3 halves, though, as long as you think 1 and a half when it comes time to plot. So once we've got this note, what should they have done on their graph? And I'm seeing somebody making some markings over there, Gavin. Is that a bad sign? All right. Tell you what, Gavin, you tell me what should you have done. Um, five as y intercept. It's not a five. It's a negative five. The negative five. So we should have been down here for our y intercept. And then from there, we should have gone. We should have gone. There we go, up 5, and then over positive 2. Again, positive slope both times. So both lines will appear to run upward, and we would have gotten a line that looks like this. And um, Maddie, did you have a line like that? All right, and Gavin, you were saying yours did not turn out that way. All right, good. Questions on this? All right, go ahead and set up a graph grid. So Maddie with two, Gavin with one. Go ahead and set up uh, a new graph grid. I want you to do numbers 18 through 20 there on page 109. 18 through 20 on a new Cartesian plane. Take a look at it in just a couple of minutes.
hardest part here was probably setting up the Cartesian plane because the equations were already in slope intercept form for you. Uh, number 18, what do we do to graph this equation? Um, Noah? Where? Um, on the y. Good. We plot the two on the y-axis. From there, we will go up three. Direction. Which direction? Right. Go to the right two, forward two, positive two. And when we connect the dots, we should have gotten a line that looks like this. How many of this line for number eighteen? All right. For number nineteen, what should we have done? Reckon. All right. All right, good, because the slope is 3, which means 3 over 1. So we do have that run of 1. And should have got the line that looks like this. And we got that line for number 19. Question, Gavin. right above 19 at the negative 2 fifths slope for number 16 and you did that. All right, that's what you did. <clears throat> All right, and uh, let's see here. Gavin, let's come back to you and see if you got number 20 at least. Um, so for number 20, uh, this one's a little bit more challenging. What do we need to do first? Good. We're going to plot on the y-axis at negative 2 and a half. Okay, negative 5 halves. We're thinking negative 2 and a half. From there, I right, say so there's 1, 2, 3. We're at positive a half right now. And from here, 1, 2. So there we are. And when we connect the dots, and I'll use a dashed line this time. Do you notice that this line appears to run parallel to my first line, the white line, right? Look at the equation number 18 and equation number 20. Just looking at them, why do you think they must be parallel to each other? They have the same slopes, don't they? At the same amount of slant. Well, if two lines slant the same, then they're going to end up running parallel, aren't they? So uh, not surprising there. How many got all three lines correct? All three correct. All right. Gavin, yours, I assume, was the second one, number 19. Noah? This 20. This 20. Did you get the wrong starting point, perchance? The negative two and a half? No, I didn't go up the half. I just went up the... Okay, so for instance, instead of going up one and ending up here, you went up more like a half. Two and call it one, two, three here. Okay, so yeah. So remember, for instance, if I were at like negative three and three fourths, <laughs> heaven forbid. All right, one would be negative two and three fourths, negative one and three fourths, negative three fourths. Right. So kind of wherever you are, go to that next point above the next line, if you will. All right. Let's practice now getting the uh, the slope intercept form. Set up yet another Cartesian plane on your paper. Set up another Cartesian plane on your paper. Take a look at a few more of these together, and then I'll have you work some more on your own. Everybody awake now? First hour, I gotta wake you up a lot. I mean, every day. Yeah. Wake you up at least once. Maybe I just like to get my own heart rate up. <laughs> before my eyes. The visions of getting my skull cracked by a rogue graph pulled down. This is why they invented smart boards where you could just project the graph graph on the smart board. This is the one thing I think a smart board would help a math teacher with. 
problems. It would take up too much space in my wall. I wouldn't have room for the chalkboard. I care about the chalkboard more. So here we go. Just risk life and limb every day to teach you guys how to graph. I love you. I really love you. All right, let's take a look at number 27. Uh, we have an x negative y is equal to 10. And if I want to graph this equation, uh, let's see, Maddie, walk us through. Okay. Questions, comments, class? This is a, not a y, it's a negative y, isn't it? Don't lose the negative. Now, Maddie, we can take care of that negative really easily if we'll do what? Do you remember? Just change all the signs across. So make it positive, make it positive, make it negative. So really, we have y equals x minus 10. Now, what is the slope of my line class? Positive 1. A positive 1 over 1. And uh, this is a bit of a bummer if you drew your graph grid small because I need to start my graph, Maddie, at on the y-axis. So I need to plot my winders up way down here at negative 10. Mine just does fit. And then from here, we will... over one to the right, positive one. And when we connect the dots, we will get this line. And there we go. All right, questions on that one. So there's two ways. We already looked at the double switch, which I think Noah walked us through a double switch. We could have done that here. Or just ditch the x like you always do, but if you wind up with a negative, change all the signs. Uh, but don't lose the negative. That's one of the reasons I want to look at this one with you. Number 34, we have a 2x, positive 3y is equal to 8. 2x, positive 3y is equal to 8. Noah, help us with this one. Walk us through. What do we do? To get, what do we write? the 8 thirds as a cop out, just be like 8 thirds. I mean, it would have been fine. The equation wouldn't have been wrong, but when we come over here and I've seen now what is 8 thirds? You'd have to do it eventually anyway. 2 and 2 thirds. So here's 1, here's 2. So you're going to have to kind of guesstimate breaking down that next box into three parts and putting the dot on the second part of it. All right, so 2 and 2 thirds. Now here's the fun part, Noah. It's not exactly on a line. So when I rise... 2, I'm here at 2 and 2 thirds, 3 and 2 thirds, 4 and 2 thirds. But I don't actually put the dot here yet because that's only the rise. I still have to go backwards. Backward 1, 2, 3. Does that make sense? All right, do we all see how to track the slope and all of that stuff when the intercept isn't a nice, easy point? All right, and then of course we will connect the dots. And here's our equation graphed out for us on number 34. All right, questions on that one. All right, let's take a look at number 35. And uh, Brecken, uh, we've got a 2x minus 5y equals 9. Walk us through number 35, Brecken. All right, you're a double switch guy. I like it. All right, what do we get? <clears throat> hey, and I like he double switched the 9 as a negative, the 5y as a positive, but he also realized instead of saying equals 5y, I can put the 5y at the beginning. All right, great. So now we just to get. There we go. 
two fifths x. And again, two x over five is perfectly fine as long as you see that the two fifths is the slope. The x isn't part of the slope. All right, so uh, ugh, this is going to be really crazy. Where would I find negative one and four fifths on my y axis? Which would be where? <laughs> well, would I put it here, for instance? No, because no, four fifths would be almost all the way to the two, wouldn't it, class? Right? It's a fifth of a box away from two. So, I mean, if you could imagine dividing the five pieces and going down four of them. So, just put your dot. We're going to make an approximation. Put it just barely above the two. Not on the two, a tiny bit above the two. Fair enough? That's basically going to be your negative one and four fifths. All right, so Brecken, when we rise, we're going to go, we're right here barely above the negative two, right? We're going to go barely above the negative one and then barely above the zero. And then from there, that's rising two. Then we're going to go over. So we're staying barely above the axis. One, two, three, four, five. We all see it? So it's not actually at the five. It's just above the five. So our x-intercept is not 5. Our x-intercept is like 4 and a half ish okay? Um, so uh, anyway, that's just to, to point that out. But uh, yeah, there we go. Are we, do we see how fractions can be made to work? Questions at all on these before you try some on your own? Do I want some questions? Got some questions. How do you feel like we got this? This is easy now. I got it sort of. All right, well, let's do our best then on these three. Set up a new Cartesian plane. Do numbers 22, 23, and 25. 22, 23, and 25 on a new Cartesian plane.
This first one, bring the 9x over, divide everything by 3, really straightforward, where we're good to go on this first equation here. And I did want to point something out to you. Slope is rise over run. We go up 3, we go backward 1. But if your graph grid just isn't big enough, you can reverse the process. You could negatively rise 3 or fall 3. But then you've got to think we're now reversing. I'm already taking care of the negative on the rise, so I now get positive run. Positive run one would still put you in line. It's not as reliable, which is why I prefer always to go up and then run positively or negatively. But obviously, a reciprocal process still keeps you in the same line. Just be careful not to go the wrong way on the run, would be my only thought there. But that's if your graph grid just isn't tall enough to hit. You do have the option of going down and forward instead of up and backward. Does that make sense? The next one, not really an issue here. Now, again, could we have pulled a double switch? Absolutely. But I wanted to show a second time how if you do happen to move it over and you've got this negative y, you can just change all the signs and then divide by 3. The other option would have been to divide everything by a negative 3, which would have canceled with the negative 3. Negatives would have canceled to give us 2 thirds. Negative and negative would have given us positive 2. Okay, so a couple options there. Do we get this line here for number 23? All right, and then on number 25, super easy. Why negative 3x is equal to 4, I believe, was the equation. Yeah, we just have to move the 3x over as a positive. And so we've got obviously our y-intercept here at 4. We're going to rise 1, 2, 3. Don't put a dot there. Run forward 1. And then uh, there's our line there. Did we get that for number 25? All right, any questions on these, Gavin? Fixing something? Finishing something. What are you doing? Getting the next one set up. All right. Big, <laughs> hey, I like that. Four thought, four thought. All right. Uh, 36, 37, 38. 36, 37, 38. Scale down really well.
many of you, as you look to number 37, your heart just sinks and you're like, oh, a fraction. How many have feelings of hatred in your heart? Like the hate flow from the evil takes you stronger. Um, but what do I do with my hatred for that fraction class? I multiply everything by the LCD, just multiply everything by two. No big deal. Or is there a question on one? Alright, which one? The yellow, white, or yellow dotted? Um, I think I got the yellow dotted right. Okay, which one? I think I missed the other two. Missed both of them. Alright, check your equation first. On number 36, again, the x moves over as a positive. It's a 1, so when you divide everything by 2, y equals a half x plus 7 halves, or 3 and a half. So you're going to start not at 1, 2, or 3, but at 3 and a half. Up 1 puts us here at 4 and a half, and then over 2 to connect. All right, and then on uh, number 37, again, I just multiplied everything by 2, as we already discussed, to knock the fraction out. 6x minus y equals 4. I went and double switched this time um, to get 6x minus 4 equals y, or in other words, y equals 6x minus 4. So you're going to start at the negative 4, because that's not a 4, but a negative 4. Rise all the way up 6, and then go over just the understood 1. All right, Maddie, check in yours. All right, so number 38 here. Um, did you bring the 5 over as a negative, or did you switch the 3y and the 4x? Okay, and that gave you negative 3y equals negative 4x positive 5? Oh. I'm sorry? Uh, did you put a negative on the 4x? That's what happened. So one of them you moved correctly, the other one we moved wrong. And then here we would have had to then change all the signs when we divided by the 3. So that's what happened on that one. The other two you got right? All right, Brecken. Got them all. Okay, Gavin. Missed 37. Missed 37. Did you clear the fraction like I did? Or did you try to work with it? You tried to work. Maybe you can. Uh, if you move the, uh, the, did you move 3x over or double switch the half y and the 2? Assuming you can read your own writing. No, I still won't. I'm a, I gotta read cast. 
All right, do you see what you could have, should have done? All right, clear the fraction, not fraction. Now, we hate fractions, we always have. It's still an equation, right? It, so we still hate the fraction in the equation, still get rid of it, multiply by the LCD. Turn the page. Turn the page. We're going to practice now writing equations if we know stuff. Okay? You remember the other day I had you read my mind and I said I'm thinking of a fraction. The numerator is 5. The denominator is 8. What fraction am I thinking of, class? Five eights. Five eights. It's like, whoa, you're amazing mind readers. Okay, similar amazing mind reading skills are going to be needed here uh, at the top of the page. They have given us a slope. They have given us a y-intercept. They want us, mind readers, or we, mind readers, to figure out what equation they are thinking of. Let's take a look at the first one, number 39. The slope is 2 thirds. The y-intercept is 0, negative 3. Are any of you good enough mind readers to figure out what equation they are trying to think of? Brave volunteer. The great Mattini. Go for it, great Mattini. What equation are they thinking of? Well, obviously, it's going to start in slope-intercept form, right? Y equals mx plus b. So all we have to do is replace the m with the, with the 2 thirds. And we just have to replace the b with the. But which part of that is actually what goes in the equation? The negative 3. So the great Martini thinks that the equation, not Martini, that's something totally different, uh, thinks that <laughs> our equation is y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. And the great mind reader has done it. This is our equation. Do we see how easy this is, class? All right, so <clears throat> number 40, without writing anything on paper. Can't bring myself to say the great no, it just, just doesn't roll off the tongue the same way. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to give a goofy way to, to mess with your name and make it sound cool, but I don't know. Can you think of a good way, Noah? I can't either. All right. So, Noah, uh, number 40, <laughs> what do we get uh, for our equation? Y equals negative one half of x. Oh, you missed a tiny piece. Don't lose your x. Right. The x is in there as well. Try it again. Y equals negative one half x positive four. Y equals negative one half x positive four. There we go. Second try is the charm. He's not quite as great as the Mattini. All right, uh, the great Gavanini. <laughs> uh, number 41, what equation are they thinking of? I equal 2 over 1 x positive 2 thirds. Good, y equals 2 over 1 x, or just 2 x, plus 2 thirds. Uh, number 42, the great Brecanini. Uh, <laughs> can you mind read number 42, what is the equation they are thinking of? Great job. Y equals 5 fourths x, negative 1. Okay, so far, Noah, you, you are being outshined by the, all these ninnies. All right, so, not ninnies. I didn't call you ninnies. Um, anyway, number 43, Noah. Y equals 3 fourths x, negative 2. Good. Y equals 3 fourths x, negative 2. Man, it just flows so confident. Uh, number 44, Matinini, Matini, whatever I called you. Uh, what do we get? I can't remember now. Well, that's 41. How about 44? The great Martinini cannot read. <laughs> good. Why well, equal? Wait. Did you say negative 5 over 2x? Okay, good, good. I thought I heard you say something after the negative 5 over 2x. I hope oh, she didn't just say x. Y equals 7 over 1x, or y equals 7x, minus 5 halves, or negative 5 halves. Hmm. Number 45. What think you, great Gavinini? Um, I'm 
Well, no, it's not undefined. The slope is zero, so it's a horizontal line. Y equals zero over one positive x positive three. All right, or in other words, zero x positive three, right? But zero times anything class equals zero. So we could just say y equals class three, right? If you were to plug it in, we've got y equals plug it to zero for the slope. Positive three is our y-intercept. But zero x, just, it's just y equals three. So if you get an equation that just says y equals something, you know you're going to get a perfectly horizontal line. And it would run through this point of three. And there's our graph. And so, uh, yeah, so uh, on number 46, Gavinini, now that you've been trained by the master, um, what should our equation be if a slope is zero and the y intercept zero, negative four? Y equals negative four. Y equals negative four. Would it be wrong to say zero x or zero over one x negative four? It wouldn't be wrong, no, but I'm lazy. I'd rather not write any of that. I'd rather just write y equals negative four. And there we go from there. Questions on those. We're going to begin doing this. We're actually going to spend a whole lesson on this of writing equations once we know the slope and the y-intercept. The difference is we won't know both the slope and the y-intercept. For starters, we'll have to figure those things out. But once you know the slope and the y-intercept, do you see? You know the equation, right? It's really just to keep, how do we get the slope? How do we get the y-intercept? Because once we know those two things, we know the equation of the line. We'll practice more with that in our next lesson. For homework this evening, page 109. Page 109. And you're going to set up two Cartesian planes. Page 109, you're going to set up two Cartesian planes. You're going to do numbers 28 through 33. Three on each Cartesian plane. So 28, 29, 30 will go on one Cartesian plane. 31, 32, 33 will go on the other Cartesian plane. So 28, 29, 30 on one Cartesian plane. 31, 32, 33 on the other Cartesian plane. All right, once you got that copy down, you'll be dismissed from the bell rings. Have a wonderful rest of your day.